Hello, welcome to our instructional video for assembling the Whitewood Abbey core set. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who backed us in the Kickstarter and everyone who pledged a late pledge on the uh, Indiegogo. And also, if you're coming here from the website, thank you so much for purchasing Whitewood Abbey. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about both the general and the specific steps to assembling all the prints for the Whitewood Abbey. Um, first of all, let's take a look at what you get with the core set. Uh, starting here, you have the, uh, the gatehouse. Uh, of course, it's the gatehouse itself, the first floor, the roof, the external stairwell, the functional doors. And over here, we have the stables, the two sides of the stables, the two sides of the roofs, the two side roofs, and the wide double doors that go on the front. And then we have the abbot's house with the first floor, the second floor, the roof, the small roof, the awning, and of course the two doors for the abbot's house as well. And here's one of our largest buildings. All of this is the church right here. Uh, here's the first floor of the church, three large prints that fit together with two sets of double doors. And then you have the walls that are above the first floor and the, 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 uh, the removable organ that sits inside. And of course, then here we have the roof that sits on top of it all with the steeple. And last but not least, we have the monstrous scriptorium. This example is glued together already, but you have the first floor that prints in three parts, the second floor with the sets of doors, of course, there's doors on the first floor as well, the two side second floor pieces, the roof, the cloister roofs, the internal balcony, and all the doors that are included in this building. And if you look over here, for a moment, you can see uh, some of you might remember from our Kickstarter, we've painted up some of our prototype models. Uh, so this is what the set can look like, uh, printed and painted. Of course, bear in mind that we've gone a lot farther with these models since then, so these are only prototypes. They don't have finished doors, but the final set does. Uh, so let's, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Okay, so let's talk about the general preparation for all the prints in the Whitewood Abbey set. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the tools that you're gonna wanna have to do your preparation. Uh, you're gonna want to have a hobby knife of some sort, an X-Acto blade for sure, a nice and sharp, hopefully, put a fresh blade on that. And then uh, you're gonna want a set of files. Um, it's really helpful to have various uh, sizes of files, various shapes, and uh, after that, you're also gonna wanna have a, a good pair of hobby clippers uh, to help you in the preparation. Um, our doors, uh, you're going to need some spare pieces of filament to help you, or to install the doors. Uh, it can sometimes be handy to have some paper clips on hand. They can help with the installation, but they may not be necessary. Uh, you're going to want some good modeling glue um, to, to put things together. These are all the tools that you need, so let's uh, get started with uh, the general preparation. Okay, so let's look at the general preparation for all the pieces in the Whitewood Abbey corset. The first thing you're gonna wanna do when your prints come off the bed is to remove any of the built-in supports that we have. Now these supports come off really easy. In fact, you may find that they come off even before you have to manually take them off yourself. They may come off on the bed, but most of them just come right off like that. Uh, you may have to get in there with clippers uh, and give them a little snip to make sure that they come off, but they should come out very, very simply. So that's removal of the supports. That's straightforward. The second thing is that we highly recommend that you print all our prints with a brim. It really helps with adhesion, and uh, the removal of the brim uh, can be done either with an X-Acto or with the clippers. So. <clears throat> Clipping method, yeah, I, like to just, I just like to come in on the side here and just give it a little tug and then you'll find if you've set your brim properly, it should just come right off. All right, that's very, very nice, very smooth. Um, and then afterwards, what I like to do is come along with the X-Acto blade and just check and see if there's any little nibs that need to come off here. Sometimes the print will be perfect. Sometimes you'll find there might be a little bit of an edge that you can clear off with your hobby knife. But this gets everything nice and clean uh, so that when it's assembled, you don't see any, uh, any brim on your, on your print. Um, so that's cleaning off the brim. That's quite uh, straightforward. 
after you've moved to Brim, uh, actually I could bring this model back because the next thing I want to show you is checking for the little supports that are inside the door hinges. Uh, we've put these in to make sure that the door hinges print properly, but these you can just take your X-Acto knife and just pop them out. Like so. There we go. That's very simple, very easily done. You could also use the clippers if you want. You could come in, you could clip them out. Might be simpler, but either way, make sure that you remove those supports. So that's removal of the uh, supports for the door hinges. Um, the next thing you want to look at is, uh, is filing, filing the surfaces uh, between where the models are going to meet. Red, sorry, where the prints are going to meet on your model. So anything that has a surface that uh, is going to touch another part of the model, uh, the print next to it, um, it's good to just check those for any over extrusion or any little nibs that might have happened and just give it a quick file. Oftentimes it doesn't take much at all. Sometimes you might find something that needs a little more filing. This print is pretty good. Uh, I want to mention that we don't use any uh, really fancy printers in our studio. These are very uh, simple printers that we're using. So if you got your settings right, your prints can come out absolutely beautiful. So make sure that you file down anything that's, uh, that's extruding um, a, a little bit. Um, that's really uh, the, the filing, except that the last thing you want to really check for is on these tabs, which um, of course link your floors together and link the two sides of a, of a building together. Um, you want to make sure that both the tab section and the uh, receptacle, the slot section, is clear and free, free of obstructions. Um, normally they print quite well, but if uh, your bed is a little warped or something, you could have a, a problem and you have to clear it out manually. But uh, just check on the insides, make sure that you've got a nice, clean, clear opening for your, your tab to go in. And uh, then, of course, on the tabs themselves, just take, I might recommend that you just take your X-Acto knife and just on the four sides of the little pyramids, you just give them a nice sand. Um, hopefully they'll come out perfect, but we know this is 3D printing we're talking about. It's not always perfect. But then once you've done that, you're, it, it should fit together uh, just fine. And of course, when I get to the specifics of this model, we'll see it put together for real. Um, so that's about it for general prep. Uh, next, we're going to move on to uh, specific prep. Um, one more thing I'd like to show you is just uh, some of the doors. Uh, these, are the, these are the barn doors here for the stable. Um, again, for these, they've just come off the printer. I can uh, use my clippers, separate them. I'll just use one door for now as an example. Uh, a lot of the times, I can just take the brim off with my with my fingers. I don't even need the tools. But again, I'd want to clean that up. So it's nice and clean. I'll do that on both sides. And then the other thing I want to look at is my hinges themselves and make sure that the hinges are obstruction free as well. If you, This is where a, a tiny uh, file comes in handy. Sometimes I'll just go in and rotate my file a little bit. Just make sure that there's nothing, nothing holding on to there. Of course, that's going to come in handy when we put the filament in later. Okay, so one more general uh, preparation note I'd like to make is about uh, installing and assembling the, uh, the doors. We'll use an example here uh, that I, we were looking at a moment before for the uh, stables and to get into some specifics. So again, when you make sure that your, your hinges themselves are, are very nice and clean, shouldn't take too much work, um, and make sure that you file uh, on any sort of overhang area like this just really helps with with getting uh, that area clear so the doors have clearance um, so make sure that area is filed and then on the door itself um, I know we mentioned before <laughs> thanks Dal uh, I mentioned before filing um, taking off the brim but now when we get to filing I want to be very careful and delicate but uh, <laughs> we have a two-person team here making sure everything's in camera. Um, make sure that you file on both sides of the hinge. 
very delicately. You might want to support it with your finger, actually, uh, just to make sure that uh, everything is supported. And on the edges of the doors, again, just for clearance. There's not much that you have to do here, but if there happens to be any, any bit of uh, extra filament, that should do it. So next thing I do is uh, take my um, model with the hinge where the door is going to go in. Now, when you're installing these doors, uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera. We'll reference it later. But there's a very uh, there's a direction in which the hinge goes, um, and the direction in which the hinge slightly tilts towards. In this example, it's slightly, tilting slightly down. That's the way in which the door opens. So in this example, we put the door in like this, so that it opens this way. All the doors are clearly marked on the on the uh, on the PDF that you get with your file that shows which doors go where. So you don't have to worry about that. But just make sure you install them correctly. So I put the door in place. I'll do this with one hand here. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get this to face the camera here. There we go. And take my filament. Now the filament uh, preparation, it's a good idea to, to cut uh, your filament on an angle. Uh, it really helps with um, uh, getting it smoothly through the holes. So I hope that's uh, good in the camera there. But I'll put my, my filament in the hole, move it all the way up. I think we got it there. It's up through the hinge. Yep, there it is. So there you have the uh, functional door. The last thing you want to do when your door is installed is come along your filament, take your hobby clippers, and just clip off the bottom. And have a nice, smooth, fully functional, obstruction-free doorway. Um, yeah, now we'll move on to uh, some specifics. Okay, so let's talk about the specifics of assembling the different models together. Uh, we've already talked the general about preparing each print, getting it ready for assembly. So let's get down to how each individual uh, model will go together. So let's start with the stables. Um, in this example, I have all the uh, pieces of the stables out before me. I've already uh, put the doors on to this side of the stables, but I haven't yet put them on the other side. So I like to start with the doors first. So uh, Remember that you've, you've cleaned out where your supports are for the hinges. You've uh, cleaned out all inside uh, of your door frame. You've cleaned up the hinges on the door itself. Um, and then it's just a matter of putting it in place. Oh, I should mention that one thing I like to do is just check my hole uh, first uh, to make sure that the uh, filament goes right up or, uh, and there's no obstruction in the channel itself. Um, if there is a, an obstruction in the channel, uh, if there was a, a problem with the print, it's handy to have um, a little piece of, uh, of uh, paper clip that you can, just a little bit stronger, you can just put up there and clean it out if you need to. Uh, we didn't need to on this print because the print was good. So put the door in place, take a piece of filament, put it up inside. There we go, nice and tight. Everything works. Be very, um, don't force the doors, eh? If you're, uh, if you're unsure, just make sure that you don't have a piece of plastic uh, that might be stopping it somewhere. Um, so once you're sure that it's in place and it's uh, everything is snug, snip off your filament, and there we go. So for expediency's sake, I'm not going to put the other door in right now, but I will show you where all the pieces go together. So for the stables on the ground floor, uh, these two pieces fit together like this. Make sure that you've done a nice amount of filing in between uh, to make sure that there's a nice snug fit. Um, and then you've got the, uh, the two roof pieces, which fit together like this. Uh, once those are glued, it'll be in a nice tight seam. Um, and then that is going to go on top of here. Of course, you're not going to glue the roof to the, uh, to the bottom, of course, because it's, uh, it's wants to want to remove it. Um, with the doors, when you're installing the doors, uh, for this print, on the left side, of your, of your model, uh, the doors with the horseshoes go on the left side. So if, if it's all in the instructions in the PDF, but just uh, you see there's a little horseshoe here on the front, and on the back of this left door, there's a horseshoe there. So you know the two horseshoe doors go on the left side of the stables, not the right side. 
Um, so once you've got that glued together and you've got the, the roof glued together, uh, these pieces here, they don't, you don't want to glue them on because uh, you want to be able to remove them during play. And they just sit in place on the side whether or not you have your roof on or not. Uh, the last thing that you're going to want to assemble on the stables is on this half of the roof. There's a little, um, let's see if I can point that out, you can see it. There's a little uh, area here, um, a divot, that is to receive the winch. So the winch, you just want to put a little bit of glue on the back of there. And hopefully uh, you can see that in the camera. Stick the, uh, the winch in uh, there. Hold it for 10 seconds or so and it should be glued. And then you've got your winch in place as well. So we will show you this model uh, completely glued together uh, a little bit later on. But first, we're going to move on to the next uh, model in the set. Okay, so the second model we're going to look at assembling is the Whitewood Abbey Gatehouse. So you've already printed out all your pieces. You've done a general cleanup on them, a general preparation for assembly. And now we're going to look at the specifics for assembling the gatehouse itself. Uh, once again, I like to start with doors. Uh, and it's important to start with doors on this model because uh, there's holes both on the top of the gate and on the bottom of the gate. So that can help with the, uh, the insertion of the, of the filament. Um, so there's two doors uh, that form the main gate uh, for the, the gatehouse, and it's important which way they go in um, so that they swing properly because they only swing one way. Uh, this is the way that they go in, uh, but you can also tell, as you can tell on all the models, by uh, on the edge, if you look at it, uh, if you look at it this way, you'll see that the hinges curve slightly that way, and that's the direction which the door opens. It always opens in the direction of the curve. So since these gates open inward, this would be the gate for this side. So I'll show that how we insert that. Um, okay, so I'll see if I can uh, show you there. So I've got the, the door in place and I've got my filament and I'm going to put it up through the hole and there we go. It's in place. I'm going to take uh, my other side Make sure that it's oriented the right way. Put that door in place as well. Put my filament through the hole. And there we go, that uh, is in as well. So for the gatehouse, you could snip them off or you could just push your filament through to wherever you need it. Um, and hopefully they should uh, open fine. Um, so that's the main gate. Uh, there's a little bit there I've got to snip off. Okay, so the first, uh, the main gate is done. Um, then it would be safe for you to glue on your, uh, actually, let's put the door in for the second story uh, because again, we have a hole on the bottom and on the top. So this is actually something that we wanted to show you in case you have uh, some sort of printer error and are worried that um, maybe you have an obstruction in the hinge. So we had a printer error on this piece. We had a layer shift right I'm not sure if you can see it all from the angle, but we had a, a layer shift right about here, right where the hinge is. So we had a little trouble getting the door in. And um, first of all, you can always uh, help with any obstruction by using a paper clip uh, just to try and, and clean that out. But in this case, we needed to do a little bit more than that. And what we did was, is uh, once we put our door in place, instead of using 1.75 millimeter filament, we just used, again, a paper clip, because the paper clip's a little bit thinner. So that paper clip fits through just fine. And there we go. It's in place. With the top and through the bottom, door opens fine. So no need to worry if you have a small printer error like that. You can take care of it with a paper clip instead of a, uh, a piece of 1.75 millimeter filament. So I'll cut these off. Woo! Watch out. Cut that off, and there we have it. So um, once the doors are installed, you're safe to uh, glue the uh, bunk on top of the gate. You want to glue that in place there, again, making sure that your pegs are, are cleaned and, and fit nicely into the holes. And these two pieces you want to glue permanently, but you don't want to glue the roof on. Well, maybe you do, but chances are you don't want to. So um, the roof would go on there. And then that's it for your gatehouse. The stairwell just it's on the side there like that. And there's a little divot in the, uh, the corner of the, um, the railing 
that fits around the, the door frame. So it fits nicely in place like that. So I'm going to glue this all together and you'll get to see it assembled at the end of the video. Okay, so the next model we're going to look at assembling is the Abbott's house. So uh, once again, you've come in with your general prep, you've filed down the edges you need to file, you've uh, taken off any brim, and what the Abbott house has uh, that some of the other models don't have is these uh, little lanterns. Some of the other models have it as well, and where these lanterns are, there's some built-in supports that you're going to have to take off uh, manually with, uh, with your clippers. So you just get in there, clip them off. go a little bit of cleanup in there there might be a little bit of cleanup um, against the, uh, the stone wall in which case you can just take your file and just file those down very um, to make them smooth with the, uh, the stone um, moving right along the next thing I like to do is to, uh, to put in the doors um, it's always a good idea to put in the doors first make sure that they, uh, they fit nice and easy so this front door in here. Um, turn it over. Slide our filament in. Oops. Sorry about that, folks. Try that again. It's kind of hard to do to get the angle on the uh, camera here. There we go. There we go. Nice and smooth. Make sure that your door opens nice and all the way. And you flip off, flip off these, uh, flip off the uh, bits of filament. And uh, there you have it, the first floor. Um, in the Abbott's house, both the second floor and the third floor do not glue. Whoops, do not glue on um, because you uh, want to be able to access the interior. But what does glue on is this little secondary roof uh, for, the, for this back entrance. Um, the roof goes on with this little rafter on the outside. And what we like to do is make sure that the second floor is nice and, and tight. And that way, you know exactly where the, uh, the little secondary roof is going to go. And we can glue it in place without it interfering with the rafters that come down from the second floor. So I'm going to glue this all together and, uh, and trim up anything that needs to be trimmed, and then we'll show you the finished version at the end of the video. Okay, so let's move on to the specifics for assembling the Whitewood Abbey Church. This is a monster. It's a beautiful monster, though. So you've already done the, uh, the general uh, cleanup on your pieces, and now, um, now we get to assemble the church. Uh, like all the models, first thing I like to do is do the doors. Uh, so. The Whitewood Abbey doors, there's two sets. There's this square set, which goes on the front entrance, and there's this um, arched set, which goes on the side entrance. So I'm going to start with the front entrance. Remember, with all the doors, to make sure uh, that you install them the right way so that they open the right way, the hinges are facing the right way. This front entrance, the door is open out as you can see by the hinges, so my hinges will be aligned with the curve slightly out. My piece of filament. There we go. There's one. Whoops. And there's two as our front doors. So I'm going to just snip off the tops. There we go. Okay, so um, again, for the sake of expediency, I won't install the uh, side doors, but I will show you how these pieces all go together. So the f I'm not sure what you can see there, but the... Uh, this is this good? Okay. So the first floor simply fits together like that. You want to glue these three pieces, pieces together. I find it helpful to put glue 
uh, also a little bit along this seam as well, just to make sure that the floor is held together well. So those three pieces are going to go together. I'm just going to move this to the side here. And then we have the walls. So the walls, you want to be, there's a special way that we have these glued together uh, that allows for the best sort of playability for the space. And that is you want to glue them like this with the asp, um, the apse rather, and the, uh, the midsection glued together, but where the front entrance is to keep this separate. So this piece, you don't want to glue to anything. This piece with the balcony, the interior balcony and the front entrance will not be glued to anything. So put that aside. However, you are going to glue together the midsection with its two separate walls and where the altar is on the church opposite the front door. So that piece you will glue together as well. Um, once that's glued together, you get to glue together the roof. So the roof section, again, it has these tabs uh, along the roof rafters that glue in to one another like this. And the roof is a section that you do want to put uh, completely glued together like that. Um, so that's all going to be glued together as one unit. And then, once that's glued together, just move that out of the way, we have the steeple. Now the steeple, uh, you want to glue. You have to be careful in the alignment of this because there is a proper and an improper alignment. This would be an improper alignment, a bit of an, an overlap. And then this would be a proper alignment where there's, there's no overlap. So you want to glue that on there. And then, of course, there's the, the little uh, tip of the steeple that you'll glue on top. Um, when you're putting the steeple on the top roof, there's also an alignment that is correct. So one way it fits in, the other way it does not fit in. That's just to keep everything the way it was designed. Last but not least, on the interior of the church, and I'll represent this by bringing in that front piece again, placing the front piece on, turn it around so you can see. We have the detachable, the removable organ, which fits in quite simply, as long as you keep it straight. But it's easier to do when it's down. There we go. Fits in like that. So that's how your organ fits in, and you can remove it when you need to. Uh, you can put the uh, top on as well. So again, if you have it set up like this, it just slides on very neatly like that. And uh, hopefully you can, uh, you can all see that, how it looks with your organ in place. So I'm going to glue that all together, and I'm going to, uh, you get to see how it all looks glued together at the end. I'm going to show you the specifics for assembling the scriptorium. Now, the scriptorium has uh, already been glued together, but it's still a, a very good demonstration to show you where the doors go and how the specific pieces fit together, because it's very essential that, they, uh, that you get this right. So the ground floor um, has three main sections. There's one here, uh, the middle section, uh, one B is there, and then one C will be there. So A, B, and C of the ground floor. And there are three doors that go in the ground floor. Um, this is the uh, front door. A piece of filament. There we go, nice and easy. Snip that off. Front door is in play. Uh, and then we've got our wonderful little side door here. It's the smallest of the, of the three doors for the, for the main floor. Put that door in. Filament. Put that through, nice, nice and easy. There we have that. Second door is in play. 
And then, of course, there's the side entrance to the scriptorium, which this is the largest of the three doors. Beautiful hinge design on it as well. So put that door in. Uh, this door, you have to come from the bottom. Second. There we go. And step off the bottom, and we've got our side door as well. So that's the uh, ground floor with the three doors installed. Now, the second floor, uh, 2A, B, and C, is this is 2A over here. 2B is the largest of the three prints, and then 2C. So from the front, it'll look like this when you're assembling it. You have the low wall of 2A, then the high arch of uh, 2B, and then again the low wall of 2C. And that piece, when it's in play, is just going to fit on just like that. Okay? Then we have 2D and 2E, which are the, let's start with this one over here, the side doors. Uh, 2D fits on this side over here. I'll show you that from this side. So it fits over this. And then we have on the other side 2E. Fits in like that very nicely. Now we have your completed um, scriptorium from the second floor. The roof, again, the roof A, B, and C glued together and fit on quite simply like that. And then last but not least, we have your, well, actually not last, but we have your cloister roofs which fit on like this. Um, I'll just show something again on the second floor here. There's also your doors for the, uh, the second floor. These are your, uh, your front doors um, for the second floor, and they fit in here. And then you have one more door on the side, which is, which is this door here, which is going to fit in here like that. I've already had them installed. And then the final piece, let's take this D and E off and I'll show you uh, inside the second floor, is you have your that would be the best angle, there we go, probably a good angle. Your, your balcony, which I recommend you don't glue in because if you have a mini adventuring under there, you're going to want to access them. And of course, that balcony leads around to the back balcony. So there you have it. There's the uh, assembly of the scriptorium. And that is the final piece in Whitewood Abbey. So that's our instructional video on the assembly for the Whitewood Abbey corset. Uh, we have the scriptorium, the gatehouse, the church, the abbot's house, the stables. And now that we're all finished this corset, the next thing we're going to be doing is the walls uh, that surround the whole compound. And then, of course, the long list of stretch goals we're going to get started on, which will start with the furniture for the abbot's house and the furniture for the church and the scriptorium. If you haven't checked out what, uh, what's on that list, go take a look at the Kickstarter and it's still out there. So once again, thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for checking out what